Shalom. This week, for the first time, we encounter the commandments relating to the Holy Temple. This week we're going to be reading Parshat Truma, beginning in Sefer Shemot, the, the book of Exodus, chapter 25, and we encounter all of those commandments relating to the building of the tabernacle, later to become the Holy Temple, the materials and the furnishings, and some of the ingredients that are going to be making up various parts of the divine service. So the portion opens, speak to the children of Israel and have them take from me an offering. From every person whose heart inspires him to generosity, you shall take my offering. And this is the offering that you shall take from them, gold, silver, and copper, blue, purple, and crimson wool, linen, and goat hair. And the verses continue with some of these ingredients, some of the materials for the furnishings. But actually, soon we have the actual general comprehensive commandment, and that's verse 8, which applies to the perpetual responsibility and obligation of the Jewish people to build the Holy Temple, and that is in verse 8, and they shall make for me a sanctuary, and I will dwell in their midst. So we have here the beginning of the whole era of the Jewish people that calls them to their destiny to build the Holy Temple. We have here the beginning of these commandments, and after the original commandment for building the sanctuary, we receive the details of the various furnishings, the priestly garments, the next few Torah portions, all these details relating to the Holy Temple. But the very first commandments, the very first specific individual item that God tells us to build here in our Parsha is indeed the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant, of course, is the most fascinating and compelling concept perhaps relating to the Holy Temple. So much has been said about it and movies have been made about it and, and it just attracts a tremendous amount of interest all over the world. And everybody wants to know about the Ark of the Covenant and where is it? So let's cut to the chase before we continue and let me tell you that the truth is the Jewish people know exactly where the Ark of the Covenant is. It was never lost. It's a tradition that's been handed down. The Ark of the Covenant never left Jerusalem. It was concealed before the destruction of the first temple in a special chamber underneath the Temple Mount. And according to our tradition, when the time comes before the building of the third temple, it's going to be revealed again. So there are those amongst us that know exactly where it is. So if that's what's been keeping you up at night, you could get a little bit of rest. But what is this thing anyway that everyone is so interested in? Well, let's read a little bit of the verses that relate to the Ark of the Covenant begins in verse 10. They shall make an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits its length, a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height. And you shall overlay it with pure gold from inside and from outside. You shall overlay it, and you shall make upon it a golden crown all around. And you shall cast four golden rings for it. You shall place them upon its four corners, two rings on one side, two rings on the other side. And the verses go on to tell us about the two angels, the cherubim, that sit on top of the cover of the ark. The truth is, there are some very unusual things about this item that we don't find um, in the same context regarding any of the other temple furnishings or vessels. For example, verse 25, 8 tells us, and you shall make for me a sanctuary, and that verse is plural. But all the other items that God instructs the Jewish people to make for the Holy Temple, all of those commandments are in the singular. The only two verses in the entire Torah that relate to temple-related commandments that are in the plural is 25.8, which is, and you shall make for me a sanctuary, and this particular commandment that is relating to the Holy Ark. These two commandments, the, the temple in general, comprehensively, is in plural, as is the Aron Habritz the Ark of the Covenant, and all the other commandments are singular. And of course, this must mean something. In fact, what it shows us is that there's something about the Ark that signifies, that alludes to the unity of all of Israel. And there are a number of other very fascinating details that are different about the Ark than any other of the items relating to the Temple. For example, all of the furnishings, the vessels that we are commanded to construct in the Temple there's a particular aspect of the divine service that are associated with them. They are used for a particular aspect of the divine service. But the truth is, none of the avodah, none of the service is actually done with the ark. 
the only kind of action that takes place with the Ark is on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, when the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, enters into the Holy of Holies and he deals with the incense in the proximity, near the Ark, but not actually relating to the Ark at all. Not only that, this vessel is a permanent receptacle. It holds the tablets of the law that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai. It's the only vessel, of all the temple vessels, that actually is a receptacle for something. There's another very interesting commandment relating to the Ark that doesn't apply to any of the other vessels in the Holy Temple, and that is, as we find here in this chapter 25 and verse 15, there is a mitzvah, a commandment never to take the poles off of the Ark. They have to be there all the time. In fact, our sages describe that these poles were kind of jutting to the edge of the curtain dividing from the Holy and the Holy of Holies, and they could be barely seen, just kind of their silhouette sticking out against the curtain of the Holy of Holies. And that's because the Ark, unlike any of the other major, major vessels in the temple, unlike the menorah and unlike the table of the showbread, the Ark was the only vessel in the temple that was resting to its length and not to its width and not to its length. All the other vessels are placed according to their length, but the Ark is actually placed according to its width. So what is this really all about? What is the concept of the Ark which is so compelling, which people find so riveting, which arouses such emotion and around which there is such speculation? And as I mentioned, the truth is for the Jewish people, we rest easy because the Ark, as important as it is, and with all of the tremendous spiritual significance that it carries, we do know where it is and there is a tradition and a promise that when Third Temple is built, the Ark will once again be revealed. You know that we really have to understand, in order to, to really approach this question, we have to understand in general the purpose of the whole Holy Temple is. You know that there are parallel worlds, and what's going on in this world is a counterpart, is a tikkun, is an attempt at rectification of many other spiritual concepts. And the truth is that the Aron is considered to be the source of the light of the temple. The Divine Presence is associated with the Ark of the Covenant as is the dissemination of Torah knowledge. And the Ark really is the vehicle through which the hidden light of this world, and there is a light that's hidden in this world, the Ark is the vehicle through which that light is revealed. And the truth is that the Holy of Holies, where the Ark is standing, is in itself a continuation of the Garden of Eden. And thus, on one level, the Ark is really signifying the tikkun, the rectification of chet etzadat, of the sin of the eating of the tree of knowledge. And the truth is, if you remember, just as they were cherubim that were stationed and were placed to watch over the path to the tree of knowledge, so also there are these two cherubim watching over the Ark. And the truth is that the main function of the Ark of the Covenant, and this is why there's no other actual service which is associated with it. And this is why there are so many mysteries and so many details relating to the Ark and why it is instructed to us in the plural and not the singular. So many details make sense when we understand the true purpose of the Ark is to express the love of the Almighty, the Holy One, blessed be He, for Israel and to channel the light of the tablets of the law to Israel. And the truth is when we understand this function of the Ark on that level, on the level of the Holy Temple being a parallel to the world of rectification. This is the world in which we are trying to fix everything, but there is a world of emanation in which everything is already fixed. And the idea is that once we understand this, we understand why it is that everybody wants to know where the Ark is. And we also understand why it is that it will be revealed. Because the truth is that on a soul level, everyone knows that God's love is real, even if we can't see it. We also know that the world is moving towards this shining time when the true depth of that eternal relationship, the irrevocable, untarnished, undeniable, and unalterable relationship that we have with God as symbolized by the ark will be revealed.